Hello everybody, my name is Simon and today we're going to make this fox explode. Let's get on with it. So you see here that we have a fox that drops down, bounces a bit and then just falls over on the ground. So as I said, we're going to make this fox explode. And if we want to do that, we need to add a script. I've already prepared a script here, but when you're adding your own, you go here to add component, click it and type something like bomb and new script and then you can create this but i've already created a script called bomb so i can, can't do it again so now i've opened bomb in visual studio and we're now going to start coding first off we're going to create the exploding function so we type public void explode with a, with a capital e then we add parentheses and curly brackets and press space nice and now we can type something like destroy game object and add a semicolon after nice this will just make the fox disappear but we want it to explode so what we need to do then is to create a prefab containing an explosion and then instantiate that explosion using the bomb script so first off we need to create a prefab i've already done that called it explosion but if you want to create your own just go here in the hierarchy right click go down to effects and click particle system in here you can make your own particle system you can make it emit faster you can change the color of the particles and in the end you can have something like this so that looks pretty cool so now let's get coding so we need to make a public transform and call that explosion Add a semicolon. Nice. So now, above destroy game object. Really important that it is above because if we destroy the game object before we instantiate, we also destroy the script, which means that nothing will instantiate. So um, we type instantiate parentheses explosion with a non capital E, comma transform that position, transform that rotation. Uh, semicolon. So this will instantiate, which is a kind of a complicated word, but it means basically create. This will create the explosion we assign to this public transform. So that it will be created on the fox position and with fox rotation. We might want to delete that um, because the fox is in a pretty weird rotation. You can see if we click on the fox, it's a negative 90 degree angle on the x-axis and in a negative 90 degree angle on the z-axis. This is because the fox model is made on me and therefore very weird. And uh, so I apologize for that. But you could, instead of this, type transform here. But I'm not going to do that. Okay. Now we save and head back into Unity. Now if you click on the fox in the hierarchy, we can see here in the specter that the bomb script is re requesting an explosion. So I drag from the project tab in to the bomb script the prefab that i made earlier so now we have that into the script and what we are missing now is a way to make the explosion actually trigger so we create a new function by typing void and we want the start function because it wants it to happen right when the game starts so we type start and then it's going to auto complete this for us i don't know if this will work so i will remo remove where it says private up here and here we can type something like explode just to test things out so now you can see that the fox is not exploding but when we click play the fox just explodes it's a bit laggy because the game has just started and things are loading so that's not good but you can see that the game created this explosion clone which is basically just the explosion cool so now we want to create a delay before the fox actually explodes so to do that we need to create an i enumerator an i enumerator is basically like a function where we can call yield or wait for seconds which does exactly what it sounds like wait for a couple of seconds so let's do that right now so first up we create the function we call it i enumerator first instead of void so then we type the name of the i enumerator so we can call it something like WAIT with a capital W. 
add parentheses and curly brackets. And in that function, we type yield return new wait for seconds parentheses semicolon. Nice, good. Now within these parentheses, we can type float time and type time in here. So when we call the wait on the enumerator by typing wait and then parentheses, we can now in here type how long in seconds it should wait before doing the next thing, which is executing the explosion function. Cool. So let's create a new float, a public float, called basic waiting time. I will tell you why I type basic in just a little while. Just add a semicolon now. And in here we can type basic waiting time. Nice. So if we head back into Unity, click on the fox. And go down to the bomb script, we can now assign a waiting time in seconds before the fox explodes. We can set that to something like 2 seconds. Click play and watch as the fox does nothing. Well, what happened? Well, that's because in the script here, where we start via numerator, we did something wrong. We should close that in parentheses, and before that, type start coroutine. So now whenever you want to start an I enumerator, you have to type start coroutine first. I forgot that, but now we all know that to 100%. We head back into Unity, and now we click play. So hopefully now, we will see the fox exploding. Like that. Cool, that's nice. But now, we want to add one more thing. Well, sometimes the fox might be traveling mid-air, but we might not want the fox to explode like that in mid-air. So what we do then, is wait for the fox to touch the ground, and after it touches the ground, we can then wait like one second, and then explode it. Because in some games, people want the object to explode only after it touches the ground. So let's do that here. And of course, if you don't want that, you can just stop the video here, go somewhere else, and have fun, and try it out. So yeah, to you, I say goodbye, but to everyone else, I say, let's get on with it. First, let's select the, the fox in the hierarchy, and you will see that I've already created a box collider that is a trigger for this fox. Why did I do that? Well, it's because I want to detect the collision when the fox touches the ground. But let's delete this for now, and create a new one. Type collider, select box collider, and click. So let's do that. So we just add one here, add one here, and add one here. So just make make it one and one hundredth of a meter larger on every axis. Cool. So what we didn't need to do now is click on the ground and click add tag. You will see that I've had two previous tags which are marked as removed and they will be removed the next time I reload the project, so that's why you see these here. You won't see those, but I see those. Now you click on little plus here, and you type ground. You can type whatever you want, but I choose to call this tag ground. Now we select the ground again in the hierarchy, click untagged up here, and besides where it says tag, and now I can choose ground. So now it's tagged as ground. Let's head back into the bomb script, and now we can create a new function, which is a little bit special. It's called on trigger enter. So this function only triggers when the trigger collider on this game object gets into another collider. Because we here get the collider of the object we collide with and store it in a variable called other, we can read the parameters and the attributes of this other object. So we can type if other dot tag equals ground. So this will check if the object we collided with has a tag called ground. Then we will execute the wait i enumerator again, but with a different time. So first off, we need to uh, type start coroutine 
add parentheses and within those we type wait add parentheses and what do we add in here well we add a new variable in the form of a float just like basic wait time but we will call this new float public float collide waiting time and that is simple so now we type exactly that collide waiting time and then a semicolon of it all so now when we enter a collider with a tag of ground we start the waiting i enumerator which waits for the amount of seconds we set collide waiting time to then after those seconds have passed we then start the explode function which instantiates an expl explosion and destroys the fox not that complicated actually so let's get back into unity and click on the fox and now we set collide waiting time to something like one and we can set basic waiting time to something like 10 so unless the fox touches the ground it's not going to explode before 10 seconds have passed so now the fox falls to the ground and it explodes or rather, should explode. Well, it seems like we've got a bug here, and I think I know the cause. So we've got to make the box collider a trigger, and now when we click play, it should work. Yes, the fox explodes before 10 seconds have passed, but only one second after it touches the ground. That's really neat. So yeah, that's it for this episode, thank you for watching, if you like it, please check out the previous episode. Which, by the way, got enorm an enormous amount of views. I'm so thankful for that. Go um, I even got a comment, I got some likes. That's really nice. We're it's so nice to see some nice response to the first ever video on this channel. So, thank you so much, people. Thank you so much. I hope that we can make this channel a big thing. Teach so many people how Unity works and how to make games. So, thank you so much. I will leave the link to the code and a link to a previous episode in the description and you will also be able to click on the little card at the end of this video to be taken to the last video. So yeah, thank you all for watching and bye bye.